shall many be made righteous. So it is Christ that is your sacrifice. He is the real atonement. Let's go to uh, Hebrews 9 and we're going to start at verse 1. Hebrews 9 and verse 1. Go ahead. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. Mm -hmm. For there was a tabernacle made, the first, wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. Uh -huh. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. And then, you know, when you had the tabernacle, you had this veil that the Lord said he had to make this veil and he had him, uh, make it, to make it with cherubims. And on this veil, the high priest would take the sin offering and he would sprinkle the blood on the veil. And once a year on the Day of Atonement, he would go behind this veil and he would sprinkle the blood and he would put it on the horns of the altar to atone for the sins of all the congregation. This is what this is talking about. And behind that veil was called the most holy place or the holiest of all. What verse was that? That was verse three. We finished. OK, uh, skip down to verse uh, six. OK, now, when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. And the priests always went before this veil. Sprinkling blood and doing the other things, the service of the tabernacle. Go ahead. But into the second, he went the high priest alone once a year. But into the second, or in other words, behind that veil, he went once every year. Go ahead. Not without blood. Not without blood, because blood, the Lord told you, he is giving you blood to make an atonement for your souls. It is the blood that cleanses you. Go ahead. Which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. And he offered this blood when he went behind that veil for himself and for the people. Go ahead. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all had not yet manifest, made manifest. He said, now the Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet manifest. What does he mean? It wasn't yet manifest. It wasn't yet manifest because the true sacrifice hadn't come. This was a shadow of when the blood of Jesus would come on the scene, which is the real sacrifice, which is the real holiest of all. Go ahead. Well, as the first tabernacle, tabernacle was yet standing. What verse is that? Verse nine. OK, <laughs> skip down to verse 11. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. See, he is the high priest. What people don't understand is the only one that could do the sin offering, the only one that could stand before that veil and then go behind that veil to make an atonement for the sins of the people that was the high priest. Couldn't know any old common person going to the tabernacle, take them some blood, go into the holy place and sprinkle blood on the veil and then go behind the veil and uh, uh, sprinkle blood on, on, a, on the horns of the altar and all of that. It had to be the high priest that did that job. That was their job. And Christ, being a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, he is the one that can make that atonement. And he made it not with the blood of bulls and goats, but his own blood. Go ahead. Not made with hands. This is to say not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. He entered into once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. See, not by the blood of bulls and goats, because the blood of bulls and goats could not take away sin. He did it by his own blood. Uh, go ahead. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of the Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Now we starting to get to it. What does he mean? How much more shall his blood purge you from dead works? This is not talking about the commandments. The dead works were when they took blood of bulls and goats and sprinkled it because though the, the blood of those bulls and goats could not take away sin. They did not give you back access to the tree of life. You were still yet in your sin. But the Lord allowed that because of his mercy because the wages of sin is death. 
So when you sin, there has to be some kind of payment. And the people continue to sin. So the Lord said, okay, you're going to pay something. You're going to pay with your livestock, with your cattle. Because that is one of the things back in those days that um, de uh, determined a person's wealth. If they had a lot of cattle and a lot of livestock. So you had to pay something. So instead of the Lord killing them on the spot, you had to, every, when you sin, you had to come up with a bull or a goat or whatever, the, whatever animal that it required. And you had, to make, you had to do that in order for your sins to be forgiven. But they never could take away sin. They never did take a, uh, they never did give you back access to the tree of life. It was the blood of Jesus that did that. Now, skip down to verse 18. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, let's go to Hebrews 10 and 1. Let's go to Hebrews 10, and we're going to start at verse 1. Now we're going to look. We're going to really look at this law that really couldn't take away sin. And this is the law that, that we are no longer under because Christ came and died for our sins. Remember, he said, if the blood of bulls and goats uh, could, could, could do that, then how much more should the blood of Christ when he offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. We're going to look at this. Hebrews 10 and 1. Go ahead. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. He said for the law, having a shadow of good things to come, but not the image. We already know that those laws, they, they only pointed that sprinkling the blood on the veil and going behind the veil into the holiest of all and sprinkling the blood. It was a shadow of the real atonement. He said, could never with those sacrifices make the comers down too perfect. It don't say for the law having a shadow of good things, good things to come, could never with the commandments make the comers down too perfect. It doesn't say could never with the dietary law make the comers down too perfect. It doesn't say could never with the feast days make the comers down too perfect. Read verse one again. For the law having For the law, period. He's just saying law, but he's going to tell you. Go ahead. Having a shadow of good things to come. Yes, sir. They were a shadow of the blood of Christ. Go ahead. And not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices. Could never with those sacrifices. Now we understand what law the Apostle Paul is telling them about here. He is talking about the law that had man sacrificing the blood of bulls and goats for sin. Go ahead. Which they offered year by year, continually make the comers there unto perfect. They could not make them perfect because they was offering the same sacrifices for the same sins. No repentance. As long as I got a bull or a goat, I can take it up and get my sin forgiven. I don't have to repent. I don't have to walk right. Cause I got enough, I got enough livestock to do some sinning. Go ahead. For then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. Uh -huh. But in those sacrifices, there, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. He said in those sacrifices, there's a remembrance all the time of sin. Go ahead. For it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. He said it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. But the Lord had him kill blood, the blood of bulls and goats because he did it out of his mercy. But it really was never possible for them to take away the sins of man. Go ahead. Wherefore, when he come up into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Uh -huh. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. He said, In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you have not had pleasure. Go ahead. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. All right, skip down to verse 10. By which verse nine, skip the nine. Go ahead. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will. O God, he take away of the first that he may establish the second. He took away the first. What did he